welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Whether you're from Winslow Christian Fellowship or someone who's just happened to come across the video, it's good to be able to share with you today. Uh, thank you too for those who contacted me after my first uh, video. Uh, your uh, comments were uh, encouraging and much appreciated. I'm new to this as many others and it's good to have uh, feedback, whether good or bad, on how to, to make things uh, better. Uh, me being on furlough uh, means I have a bit of time on my hands, so what better way uh, to spend it than reflecting uh, upon the Word of God. Uh, as I said in my last video, we are living in extraordinary times. Uh, although we are isolating, again, we, we don't need to necessarily be isolated. We uh, have technologies available now that you know do allow us to meet, meet remotely with Zoom and when we are calling up uh, friends and family we have FaceTime and, and WhatsApp videos so that we can actually uh, see each other when we're talking to them. Well many of you would have watched Colin's uh, videos already and um, you would have seen him in his office and behind him all uh, his books uh, very neatly arranged. Now I've also got a lot of books behind me, perhaps not so neatly arranged, um, but um, I know where most things are. Uh, over the, the years I've picked up various Bible commentaries and uh, study books, um, concordances, different translations of the of the Bible, interlinear and, and amplified. And I know you can, you know, most of that information is available online, um, but there's just something about books. I don't know if you're like me uh, or not, you, cause you can, with a book, you can put a bookmark in uh, it's still there if you have a power cut uh, and as Chris Green from the St. James Church said in the, the video link that Colin sent uh, if you've got a Bible that you study or use for your study uh, you can underline things uh, with, you know, with pencil uh, and books of course are, are tactile uh, and I feel that sometimes you know the you know, the value of the, of the written word is, is being lost. Uh, I was clearing up the other day uh, and I came across um, some letters uh, that Sue uh, had written to me while we were courting. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> the box is here and um, a bit dusty. And some of them, some of them, were marked urgent. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to read that. I'll get into trouble. <laughs> um, well, that was nearly 40 years ago. You know, when I, Sue and I were courting, there were no mobile phones or texting or messages, and so we used to write uh, almost every day. Sometimes, uh, first class, and. Uh, and it's good now because I have those letters and I can look back on the past and uh, and I don't think today you know people appreciate that uh, you know will you still have your SMS text messages or emails or WhatsApp things in 40 years time to, to look back and, and reflect upon um, so today, as I'm looking at um, Bible, uh, Bible reflection, uh, particularly at this time when we're staying at home, uh, I wanted to think and reflect on staying in touch, staying in touch. Uh, and the first you know, reading I've got is from Romans uh, chapter one, uh, beginning at verse, verse eight, from the uh, Apostle 
he says, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but I was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both the wise and unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. How often uh, do we promise to write to someone uh, or call them up? Uh, maybe we've told a friend that we're, we're going to pray for them, uh, but it, it just slips our mind. I have to be honest and uh, say it happens to me probably more times uh, than I care to remember. Uh, it's understandable, I, I guess, when... Uh, we all lead such busy lives, lots of things that fill our minds. Uh, I don't know how many of you still write or, or send cards. Uh, you know, first class postage is what, 70 or, or pence at the moment. Certainly though, I know when I get a birthday card from a, a friend or, or a family, uh, particularly if they've written a, a little note in it, something personal, uh, I, I feel encouraged. Uh, someone has remembered me uh, uh, on my birthday. And the Apostle, uh, as he was writing, he understood. He understood that it meant a lot to stay in touch. There was no social media, of course, in his time. Uh, and he wrote many letters. Um, say much uh, of the New Testament that, you know, apart from the four Gospels are actually letters written to churches as the Apostles were keeping in touch Paul of course had been instrumental in establishing a number of churches uh, and he wrote to them for various reasons uh, but mostly to let them know he was thinking about them they may uh, have been experiencing uh, some times of testing. Uh, they may have been in difficult circumstances. And he wanted them to know that he was thinking about them. They weren't alone. Uh, how often do we uh, make the effort of remembering uh, those who we are unable to be with physically? Uh, particularly at this time when we were being uh, told to stay at home. As Christians, uh, we speak about love, about fellowship, about service. How, how do we make these lofty ideals real? Staying in touch is... Uh, a very simple way of putting uh, our words into practice. We should ask ourselves, is there someone on my mind that needs to know that I'm thinking about them? How can I show my concern uh, and interest in that person that I'm unable to be with physically? We uh, recently had an updated members list. Maybe one practical way for us would be just to make a habit of ringing up uh, one person on that list every day. Of course, we can add other members of family and friends to that list. There doesn't have to be a reason to call someone, really. 
just a, a call to say how are you. Uh, I was thinking about you and wondered how you were. Stevie Wonder sa sang a song. I just called to say I love you. Now more than ever we need to let people know that we love them and that we care about them. John, in his Gospel, chapter 13, verse 34, says, A new commandment I give to you, that you may love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Love. Staying in touch. Let's just pray. Lord God, Father in heaven, we talk about being part of your family, of the cords that bind us together that can't be broken. Yet sometimes these claims seem to be just fine sounding words. We lose touch with people we were once close to. Maybe they move away. Maybe things change, a new job, different family circumstances. We become separated and drift apart, sometimes hardly giving people a second thought. We know sometimes this uh, is perhaps unavoidable, but we also know that there are those that a call to or a note or card to say that we are thinking of them would mean so much. Help us to be more aware and sensitive to the opportunities that we have to show we care. Because in showing others we care, we also show that you care. That as you have reached out to us in love, help us to reach out to others in love for your name's sake. Amen. Amen. Well, as in my uh, previous... Uh, reflection. I finished with a, um, a hymn and I've got another one uh, again today to reflect on the, that passage about keeping in touch uh, which is blessed be the tie that binds and the last verse I think is particularly relevant uh, it speaks of being apart. Uh, I know the writer probably had uh, in mind the separation uh, after death. Uh, perhaps we can still apply this to our current situation. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The Life to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our pardoned prayers. Our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual. Still be joined in part and hope.